Hi, and welcome to another episode of Crosstalks. And I'm here with Eric Schneider. Uh, thank you, Eric, for being with me. Love and it. And my name is Hugo Cuevas Moore from Crosstech, and we are going to discuss AI, artificial intelligence. And um, we are going to try to see where we are in the cross border in the cross border payments industry with AI. Okay. Uh, yes, like we've done in the past, thinking sometimes about about uh, crypto or about stable coins. Some of it is happening right now. Some of it is where we see it going. So let's start with with the benefits. What are the most important benefits that you see now for the industry in implementing AI solutions to their you know, work processes? Okay, um, it's, it's an interesting question because it predicates on how comfortable individuals are in using AI, right? Okay. And I'll give you one example. My wife was thinking that I was speaking to my girlfriend late at night as I was whispering into my phone. I was just speaking into ChatGPT, <laughs> saying, can you help me prepare a document with uh, this and that? Um, for a lot of our discussions that we have, panelists, I'm using AI on the back end, so I tell her, that's my girlfriend, we're gonna have to create a cool name for, for the AI on that side. But when it comes to cross-tech, when it comes to cross-border payments, when it comes to actual application on this part, we've really seen enterprise adoption of it. And it's interesting, because at the cross-tech uh, panel that we had this morning, one of the team members from uh, Chipper Cash was talking about AI has become an integral part of something like that. And the, how it's used, it reads information, it collects uh, information from KYC, from applications, it's able to upload it, it's able to process it. Now, I think that part is really interesting because this is normally something, a process that takes a lot of time and headcount. And so all of a sudden, if you're a startup, you're saying, well, I can't hire 30 people to, to grow on this, but if you can leverage AI to do this, I think that's a wonderful step forward. I don't think it's gonna replace people anytime yet, but I do think that leveraging from a KYC component, looking for optimized, and I was speaking with Almond FinTech as well there, Adam was saying, there's a lot of opportunity for arbitrage on finding, depending on the amount of window that you're given. And this is where AI shines, right? It has that processing computing power that it's able to identify the optimal things as long as it's well-trained. And I think that's one of the key areas to continue exploring because it's being done now. Interesting. Interesting because yes, that's true. I mean, uh, we've all gone through the process. I mean, I've, I, I've been, I went to process. I, I, I like to use it to, to find information when I'm writing so I don't spend so much time doing the research myself. And it works great. I have to fact check, yes, yes. and sometimes it works or not, but, but I am getting much more comfortable about that. Of course, um, customer service is, is a big use, yes. And, and you know, when you're looking at a web page and there's a chat and, 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 and you have now to say, okay, do I go through that? It's going to give me just, just uh, you know, very standard answers. And sometimes it works. Sometimes you said, I, I don't want to go through that because it, I'm, I'm looking for something different. But, but, but customer service is one and it's being used more and more yes. almost. I mean, it, every company that uses a website now is using AI to, to answer the the, the, the questions, but you know, I am using AI also when I'm doing something in Excel and I need a formula, it's great. You know, it just creates a formula right there and I get the answer. So with that, I get to data. In the panel, I was, I was listening to you moderating that panel. The, the data analysis was part of the things that were brought up that AI can do. Tell me about it. Okay, so AI is predicated on uh, data. And I think this is such an important component because when you start with AI, it is always incorrect. Through a little bit more data, it gets to almost intelligent. And I think that this is the, the key part. You have to train the AI. And when a lot of companies talk about, well, why don't we just replace all of our people with AI, the compliance teams, the legal team, operations team, that's not gonna fly. 
I, I don't think it's going to happen. It definitely can't happen now, and I doubt that it'll happen in the future. So it's so important to have good data in training the model on how to absorb it so that it has proper data points and it knows what to do from that piece. Now, I do see a world where the legal team, for example, reviewing contracts, they can give insights and data saying, these are one of our parameters. We need governance in uh, this market and we need information so that it is reciprocal, that they hold us liable, but we hold them liable for these other things. It gets trained over time with data and it's able to do a red line of a contract in a matter of seconds, as opposed to take an attorney hours to go through 75 pages. I don't think it's there yet, one. And two, I think each company has the ability in order to train the AI the way they want it to be responsive for. So it's heavily reliant on data, and it takes time. That's the other thing is the expectation is you're not flipping a switch here and it's gonna work immediately. Now, uh, another topic, we mentioned it briefly, but it's compliance or mitigating risk or management risk. There, I understand the capabilities. I still don't see how, and I've been asking compliance officers and compliance people Okay, are you using AI? Well, yeah, we, we do something I don't think is there yet. I don't know really if how much AI is being used by the companies to provide software, of, uh, compliance software. That's an inter interesting topic. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know enough to be able to know where that is going, but but I think that's that that's that's something that can be developed uh, and can help, really. Agree 100%. I, I do see it as a phase two though. So you identified phase one, and I think this is so spot on, customer service. There are fewer pitfalls on there, and it's not necessarily a regulated side. The compliance part is much more delicate. However, we have seen companies do it. So ThetaRay, who's come to, to Crosstech before, has talked about leveraging AI for transaction monitoring. And so this is more real time. It's allocating a score to, and it's, I think, a real cost saver in cross-border payment companies and in seeing this piece they're not holding something up they're not having a compliance officer review something and so i do think that there's a lot of potential in that phase two space but just like we were talking about it's reliant on quality data and i also don't think that it's going to replace anybody anytime soon now a couple of things to, to think about that the first one is you don't want regulators to say, hey, don't worry, we have an AI managing all of that. <laughs> They're not gonna be comfortable with that. They're not gonna lie it and you're gonna be shut down. Yeah. There. The second one is individuals. The individuals have the ability to make sure that something is checked. It's like, oh, AI says that this hasn't gone through. It was just a light pencil mark instead uh, there. I still don't think that it's replaced eyes just quite yet. But it, it's, it's interesting the fact that it reminds me um, when um, we started as an industry developing uh, payments through apps, or well, there were not apps, but you know the, the web face interface to yeah. do digital payments. There was a lot of fraud, and 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 and, and companies suffer from that. And we remember Zoom as being one of the first uh, companies. We were talking this morning yeah. about uh, when they came to to the to the conference for the first time, and we were going digital payment and debiting. Uh, uh, your bank account. It was, it was, but but I do remember um, a company that did an analysis of risk by by zip code in the United States. It spent thousands of dollars. I think that if I remember if I remember correctly, about seventy five thousand dollars to 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 stop risk by identifying the, the zip code where that transaction was coming in from. And, and, and now that you were mentioning that, that if you, if you feed uh, an AI, AI engine with that information, it could do it pretty fast if it's trained for that. It could do it pretty fast and it could probably do that analysis for less than that three quarters of a Bitcoin <laughs> price that you quoted, which is equivalent <laughs> to $75,000 or so, 100,000 and going to a million. But um, that's, that's my thought process on. I do think you're right on something like this going through. I still think that it's something to be cautious about on the AI side because the rules engine may be different at one, um, 
company, then another one. I don't know. I, I'm cautiously optimistic, but yes. I, I don't think that I'm ready to propose saying, all right, AI should replace the No, no, no. Uh, but, the world. But, but what I see it as, as a great thing is that this is a real great space for fintechs to innovate. I mean, this for creative people. And, 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 and this is more than a, a, a technical knowledge, it's creativity. And that's what I like about this is, how do I use that? I understand the technology, how creative can I be to help processes? And this is where I think, in my point of view, where AI will, 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 will flower, it, it's will bloom, it's where this, the creative individual, creative companies are going to find applications that work. And, and that's, what I, that, that, that's what I want to see. And it's happening. I mean, it's happening just with, I mean, it's been how much, two, two, two years? How fast has true, it gone? True, true, yeah. Now, uh, what challenges companies are going to have integrating AI? Okay, so there, there are quite a few. Uh, the first one is we talked about it's reliant on data. The second one is it's not going to replace compliance or legal anytime soon, right? And so to so this piece. The third one is which platform to choose? So AI is not one product uh, there. It's which one do you want? Do you want yes. the Gemini one? Do you want the chat GPT? You want the Claude? You want uh, Perplexity, which is an aggregator for, I invested in them, so soft plug. But these types <laughs> of things there to think about is like, which service do we want to go on? Not all AIs are created equal. The second one is you're not just implementing AI. You have to get your team to utilize it. And I'll tell you one thing, my dad's not gonna use AI anytime soon, right? And so you're gonna have the older workforce who are like, hold on, hold on. I just shifted from a Blackberry to now my Apple and now you're giving me AI uh, there. I think that's gonna be a challenge on adoption from everybody. There are gonna be others who wear the little tinfoil hats that are saying AI is gonna take over the world and they don't want a Terminator uh, world to, to go into. There, my wife is one of them, by the way. So uh, I'm speaking from experience on this side. She's like, I don't want anything sentient in my house. No, no, thank you. No Alexa. And if the Roomba moves in the corner, she's going to shoot it. So she, she doesn't believe in any of that stuff. And I think that's the other key part of we have to give the proper training for the people that are going to be implementing AI. And that has to come with a mentality shift. And I'll tell you something, I've had to go through it and I'm not sure I'm through it 100%. I'm using it for email optimizers. I'm using it for funny uh, the pictures. I'm using on some it for stuff. summarizing things that I don't, that there are 10 pages long and I don't have the time, but I want Perfect. to No, that works very well. Perfect. I mean, you know, analyzing that in that sense, summarizing that, and that, that can help some companies do certain things that they do internally, which they can yes. summarize information, you know. I, I, but but I, it's true. I mean, look, it's, um, it's a new world with that. We all are going to, through the learning stages. Yes. And then, you know, once we feel comfortable, we go into a, our creative minds in thinking, you know. I know some people are already there, but, um, but, you know, just to finish our talk, I mean, I like the creative aspect of this, you know. I'm not, I'm not really scared that much as other people are uh, uh, on things. Yes, of course, I'm scared. Uh, I'm worried about, you know, fake news and fake images and everything uh, of that sort, you know, and, and the use by fraudsters, which they can use it, but any tool can be used to create fraud. And it's, 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 uh, but, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm bullish about the creative or the creativity of how that can be used. We have to walk before we run, but I think we're all gonna be able to get there. Um, you talked upon something which I, I think is so important, the fraudster component there. And so a lot of pushback from AI is people saying, oh yes, but fraudsters can train AI or they can overcome the uh, training that AI has. Yes, of course, they have done that with firewalls. They have done that with uh, internet, yes. HTTPS, any type of cryptography, for example, fraudsters, Bless their hearts, if they dedicated themselves to good work, we would be in a better utopia at this yes. point. But there are always ways to go on. This is not unique to AI. Yeah. That's true. Thank you very much. Great talk as always, man. Great talk. I hope everyone find it interesting. We, we love to hear your point of view, to hear 
uh, you know, feedback on what we think. It's just our opinions, open and very transparent uh, for you to take and contradict us or agree with us. Thank you.